Hello, kids, uh, and uh, let's get started. So uh, I'm trying to put this tutorial together to show you how to use this um, SketchUp model that I've uh, created to do site surveying. So since on this year, we can't really get out and do this like we would in a normal year, and it's really a fun experience. Even in, in a difficult, technical challenge uh, for most of us, even me and adults, to figure out um, how to properly record the information required in a site survey, a land survey. Um, uh, so I, I was, I just kind of searched for these little survey figures and, and realized they had them in the uh, material library. And I'm like, oh, well, if I can get a survey rod, which I did, then I figured, oh, this might work because I found this tool, um, which if you pick on the auto level and you go to, so to the rod and you let go, uh, SketchUp automatically gives you a perspective of that thing that you're looking at uh, from the perspective of where you first clicked. And so that's how this tutorial is going to go. So the other two documents that you'll need I've created for you is this uh, template survey data sheet. And this is similar to the one I got when I first did surveying. Uh, so you have like foresight, uh, uh, yeah, foresightings. Um, you have a back shot measurements. Uh, you take the auto level height. You indicate the point at which you're measuring. So these points you'll see will align if I go back to SketchUp um, with the points that I have. And then we got La Temple Grand in here holding up the rod. I also put the uh, surveyor. So when you're surveying, oftentimes, you know, because you'll kind of see this when we take our first couple of measurements, that if you're going up a hill, well, you can't really go up a hill too quickly um, because you'll only be able to uh, take this first point up the hill to the point where the lens can still see the bottom of the rod. So you can get a measurement, a proper measurement of your elevation. So this is called a benchmark because you're gonna go measure that spot and its location elevation. And then you're gonna move your auto level to this new spot. And then your rodman's gonna go out further. So these are three benchmark locations for this example. And that shows up here. So we're gonna, from our first benchmark point, we're going to take three measurements. And then we're gonna move up to benchmark two, take one measurement and then create that as benchmark three, and then take two more measurements to finish surveying the site to get these different elevation points. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna measure the auto level height. I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna also input the, uh, we're gonna measure then therefore the elevation reading on the rod. And I'll show you how I've, what I've kind of devised to do that. And then what the, it, this will calculate elevation. This 470 I put in here pretty much as an estimate. So let me give you a little quick background. I selected this site. It's a vacant lot uh, across from Sanger Middle School, um, just south of White Rock Lake. I was biking by and it looked like a good spot to plan a home. Turns out <laughs> I did not bike down this road, which has a plaque dedicated to this guy. And it turned out ironically that this is the guy who's credited Warren Angus Ferris with surveying all of the Dallas area and setting up the road system. And so this was his old acreage. Uh, it's a pretty interesting Wikipedia article, um, but basically that's who this guy is. He also uh, was the first to survey Yellowstone, which is pretty phenomenal if you think about what an iconic place that is nowadays. So that's what this lot in the background, I put a map of that little corner lot there that currently actually is vacant and it has a little cemetery for his family. So. In our project this year, where we're building a house on top of it, we're all building, we're doing a poltergeist, <laughs> a poltergeist. So uh, I guess let me try and uh, show you how to make the first couple of measurements. So what I'll try and do is, um, and I have this other sheet, by the way, I didn't mention this, but we'll see this in a second, why I put this in there. You could just use any Google Doc for this, it wouldn't matter. 
Um, so anyways, what I was saying is, by the way, uh, to finish this, this is right down from White Rock Lake and there's actually a, a geological survey mark down here. Um, didn't take a picture of it, but I do have a picture of one that I took a picture of up in uh, northern Michigan, where I'm originally from and where I go up in the summer. And they have one right by the house where I grew up, actually down there on the lake. And they look just like this. And this is a, this will be a known bearing site of elevation and uh, location. Um, so, and this particular lot is right down the road from that. So I just estimated at 470. That's how I got this number. I didn't actually take measurements at that location, but it's probably in that neighborhood. It's about 20 feet up from the lake right there. That is my estimate. It could be a little higher. But um, so um, these then will get calculated um, from the numbers that we put in on our readings. And then we're also going to take in the model a um, what in normally when you survey is a top and lower stadium mark and their total distance on the rod as viewed through the lens and the auto level, we're gonna replace that with a reading that we're gonna take off of uh, the SketchUp model, but we're gonna need a snipping tool or a screen grab tool to do this. Um, uh, some of you may have a dysfunctional uh, Chromebook that can't do that, but hopefully we all will be able to do that. Make sure you clear cache. Uh, this is just a ratio I set the rod size at that you will use in the calculating, and then it can calculate the distance, similar to real life auto, you know, surveying. And then we can also measure the angle. That's the other thing we're gonna get. We need those three things. You're triangulating your position. You need three pieces of information. Those are the three key pieces of information. Your elevation, your distance, and your angle. So how I set this up then, let's say we, we made this point one. So I'm gonna measure that one first. Um, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and pretend that she's pointed <laughs> uh, to the rod and that Temple is over there holding that rod. And I will go in and use this tool. Uh, I mentioned that I found, I f end, uh, what is this tool called? The, yeah, the position camera. And then I just roughly, you need to keep this in frame so you can't get too crazy detailed. But I just kind of roughly look and say, all right, the lens is somewhere like that. And then I just pick on a point at the midpoint of the rod like that, and then she takes a look. Uh, so I have a PC, so I use my snipping tool here. Mm -hmm. And how I've set this up is what I want you to do, or what you'll need to do, is uh, use the crosshairs to try and just get a red and white um, element on the rod. And so you just do your best. So you're trying to get so one whole cycle of red and white like that. Uh, Snippy tool automatically copies that to the clipboard. And then I'm using my document this time and I'm going to paste it. Uh, let's pretend that you haven't put any in. I created the uh, answers for everything for the, answer, for the answer key, but we're going to start from scratch. And actually, this is going to be point one. So I just call it point one. Uh, here, you'll notice when you can highlight the image, what you can do is uh, you're going to actually image options. You're just going to go size and you're going to let it tell you what the height is. In this case, the height is exactly one um, inch. So um, that's the reading. When we go back here, we're going to put that under the, the top and bottom difference. Um, in this case, it's the vertical edge of the GDOC image. So I can actually, that's just one that was easy. So one. Uh, so that means I've had this calibrated, this model's calibrated that that in fact is exactly what uh, you should get. Uh, that's the, pro the ratio in fact that I've used in here, that one inch equals 50 feet. So I've got that measurement in there. Now I just need to get uh, where it's at on the rod, the vertical length. So to do that, what I'm asking you guys to do 
is just put a line in and we'll use the, uh, the defaulted green, red, and blue orientation of these lines to make sure it's staying on plane. And then we can connect it to the rod from the auto level and get a measurement that way. So in this case, I start at the auto level like here. And then what I want it to do is go along the green, red, or blue axes just to make sure that it's staying on plane. So in that case, you'll see it's staying uh, on plane with the green. And then I'm just stopping. And then I'm going to connect that. See how it snaps to the blue, which is going to again be perpendicular to that plane, or it's the blue, sorry. It's actually the red is that what I'm going to want in this case. So I'm just going to go past that thing a little bit. That's OK. And then now I think I can line this up with the green. I'll take a shot about that. So. Aligning the model, having a mouse and aligning the model here for your viewpoint can will really help you in this exercise. So in this case, I've got finally a point right on the rod. All right, so I can take a couple measurements now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that measurement with the measuring tape on the rod. So I go from that point where it intersects the rod to the ground, and it should be blue, and that's good. That's what you want. You know, it's going straight down to the site. And it says one foot six inches. I'm just going to go type that in right now while it's fresh in my mind. Uh, one foot and six inches. Uh, these two are set up. These are just cells that I set up. Um, and it will, these though, you have to uh, make sure that you've got the right math formula in this case, because um, it's set up to sum what the feet total are. So I don't have to get a, my calculator out and have a scratch pad to do that. I can just automatically convert that. Actually, I already know that uh, six inches is 0.5 feet. So this one is simple. I might just get that in 1.5. So um, what I need is the measurement, though, from the bottom of the camera, because that's not telling me much until I get that right. Or the bottom of the auto, sorry. So, or, so I'm measuring basically from the level of the lens to the ground. That's four foot eight inches. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in then over here um, at four, oh, eight inches. There, therefore, uh, I actually have to convert that eight inches, right? Because um, I want this measurement in feet. So when I'm, I'm just going to put that math right in here. So I'm going to say four plus eight divided by the 12. Always when you want to convert inches to decimal you just divide by 12. that's the standard i think that looks pretty good yep 4.7 okay so now um with that in there um make sure i've got the right calculation here i've got that oh i put the 1.5 in the wrong cell all right Okay, here we go. Sorry. And then don't need that. Don't need that. That is actually referring. Oh, that's right. So that I this is just a carrier over from the elevation that I put in there. Uh, that I use for just uh, making sure I got the right math. And that one was supposed to start at 470. There we go. So it recalculated the new ele yeah. the elevation at that point. Actually, this does not have the right equation. I apologize, folks. Let me just drag that up. There we go. 
So I have that being subtracted from the auto level and basically you get a net change of, um, actually, sorry, not at the end, don't have that. There we go. You get a net change of 3.2 feet up the hill is basically what that measurement is because you've got to you know, count on the fact they got this much distance coming up uh, in elevation and where that lines up to is a mark on the rod. Okay, so let me go and finish the first uh, site measurement. I've got the distance is 50 feet. I have got uh, now, actually, so now that I'm realizing it, I didn't, that's not a measurement that we need. Sorry, I put everything in the wrong spot here. There we go. And this one and this one and this one. I'll delete that out and I'll gray that out. We don't need that. All right, there we go. Uh, so let me go here and take point two and then uh, maybe show you how to make a benchmark change and then I'll leave you be. So, uh, oh, I didn't finish up with the compass. So the compass, we have to get the angle. That's right. I didn't have all three of the key triangulating measurements you need to take with an auto. So the other thing is the degree. Normally you would set zero to north. In this case, I've set um, the, the, the green axis here. That's north. And so we can measure north from it. So I put this site together and this map in the background with that intended to be north already. So how I figured out to measure that from zero is to just come over here and use their, um, where is that little compass tool? There it is. And oops. So how you do this is you make sure you're on the ground or the back plane or that back image. It's probably clicking on. And then you start by just uh, going up the north axis and then you can go around just like that. I think it's clockwise. There we go. And then click on the rod and you'll see the reading 231.6 down in the lower right hand corner. So I can put that angle in here. Okay, really back to this really quick now. Um, what we need is one more. We need to measure this one and then we can move up to that one to measure the rest. So, um, or I'm sorry, I've already skipped over point two. Why don't we, uh, I'll let you guys go ahead and get point two and maybe I'll focus in on point three right here. So in this case, that auto level person may be in the way. Um, normally they wouldn't even be there yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hide her for right now and then take a measurement up there where I'm going to create my first bench or actually what I'm calling my second benchmark this being the first position camera oops that, that happens sometimes if you don't click right you got to click and drag and drop so you got to click drag, and then drop. So once again, I'm gonna use my snipping tool, new, and just try and get exactly one cycle on that rod like that. Go back to my sheet here, paste that in. Now I can see it's 1.05 which would mean in the way the, the ratio or this work, works that that's a little closer. So let me see, uh, let's type in that and I'm just gonna paste it. Yeah, it's just a little bit closer. And then why don't I go get the angle and the elevation change. So now angle again, I measure that with the compass. A protractor, my bad guys, protractor. That natural protractor puts on the ground. Um, that just really led me to a, re a realization. You got to be careful because that's right. You want to definitely use this compass underneath the auto level because that's where you need to take the angle from. Um, 
And now um, let me show you a little trick that I think I've found for making sure you get that right. So um, what you can do is actually come here and take the a measurement, let's say from the bottom of your auto level, again, to the ground and see how it puts that little vertical uh, construction line there in there. Um, you can use that, you can actually intersect that with the ground plane. And then when you do your compass tool, you can make sure you've clicked on it yeah, again, but you need it to, yeah, there you go. You want it to be the ground plane at that point. And then I'll come and make a line parallel to north. And then I can swing it around and in this case measure a point on this rod. And there you can see it's 296.5. All right, now uh, the elevation. So that's where I'll go take the line and try and make it from the auto level. In this case, it will go up. Since my next line is gonna be that red line, I'm just gonna try and make sure this is long enough and then I hit escape to get out of that line tool and then see if I can estimate what would be a good shot to the next one. And again, I want it to turn red this time. You can hold the nut, a trick for this, once it's turned red, you can hold shift on your keyboard and just pull out and drop it and it will keep it in that orientation that you're on. Uh, that was pretty close, so I'm almost there. So again, I'm probably going to want this. Yeah, I'll, I'll use the green north bound axis this time to finish this up. So I want that to turn green, I'll hold shift. There it is, okay. And now I can get my measurement. Again, that blue axis, vertical axis down to site plane there. Whoops, I did that too fast and didn't even get my reading. Let's try that again. Not even sure that was straight. All right, so it's one foot, 11 inch, 11 and a half inches. One foot and 11 and a half inches. So in this case, I know it's the one foot, but I need to convert the 11 and a half. So I'm going to do that here. So I'll say equals 11.5 divided by 12 to its decimal equivalent. And then that's where these two should be added up actually equals that one. 1.96 and I think that's rounding it yeah I think uh, if I went that's why that is showing up as uh, two uh, again these measurements could just be copied down since all of these readings will be at the same auto level will be at the same spot you just copy those down so I don't know why it Oh, it's just calculating because I don't have a number in here yet. Uh, okay. Um, so I think I've got a, you a pretty good start on that. Hopefully you can use that. And um, uh, I'm here to help. If you need that, just reach out and uh, if you get stuck. But you should be able to get to the second benchmark, get the, the final readings, and get all of the angle distances and whatnot.
and I hope you enjoy it.